today I'm going to hopefully show you a demonstration on how to build what I call a Morse Kahansky inspired super shelter. If you don't know what a super shelter is, stick around because I think you'll find it really interesting. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, site placement is pretty important. Obviously you want a level piece of ground if you can find it. Find uh, an area where there's not going to be any deadfall that's going to fall on top of you. Make sure that you're in an area central, hopefully, to a lot of material. So you don't have to go walking, you know, four or five miles just to, to get one or two pieces of wood. Uh, once you get all that established, and once you're in an area that you're comfortable with, uh, I'm going to pick uh, an angle of the front of the shelter that's going to be parallel with the prevailing wind. So here, north-northeast is usually where the wind is coming from, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit why. Uh, so I picked two trees that I'm going to work between. First thing, though, we have to do is we're going to build what's called a raised bed, and that's going to be a bed platform that we're going to sleep on that's above the ground and away from the cold. Very important. That's going to be about 80% uh, of the efficiency of this is getting you off the ground. The second thing that's going to do is it's going to allow the heat from the fire that will radiate under you and under the bed to help keep you warm. So let's start off with the raised bed and uh, we'll go from there. Now you notice what I'm pulling up some of these logs. I'm actually putting them aside in a particular spot in case I can use them later for building materials. The area out front here will be reserved for a fire. Okay, so you, as you can see, I've got the foundation of the, of the bed made. I used eastern white pine. Uh, most, all of it was dead and standing. Uh, that's that had the least amount of rot to it. And the reason I went with Eastern White Pine is A, it was pretty prevalent. It's readily available right within not even a stone's throw of where I am. Uh, I can use the tops for the cross pieces on the top of the bed, but I use the lower, more, the thicker, the stronger uh, pieces of the, the trees to use as my foundation. And since I don't want to be burning Eastern White Pine, uh, I'm going to use it for my bed and use hardwood for my fire, but all of the trimmings that I, I'll keep for kindling later on. So you want to go two or three courses high. I went three courses high, starting out with two thick bases on each end about, uh, I used my boot, so it's, I, got a four, I got a size 12 boot, size 13 boot, and then I went four boot lengths. So it's about a little four or four and a half feet uh, in width, uh, and then just cut uh, the, just sound solid pieces uh, for the, the lengths and the cross pieces as well and then I'll save the tops for the very top we're going to go uh, take several pieces and go across this way now I've also seen the bed where it's built where you use this as a railing and then you put smaller saplings the long way this way and I forego that only because I don't really have that many saplings because they should be sort of green to give them some springiness to them. So I'm going to use the alternate method and just use the tops of the trees that I use for the base to go crossways. And, uh, but I wanted to show you the structure of it first. Now I did have to take this one tree down. It was dead. But I left enough of it to act sort of as a corner piece for the bed. Because I'm going to be staking these corners out so they don't move as much. And luckily the ground isn't quite frozen yet so that should, I should be able to do that. I'm losing daylight, so I'm going to call it quits for the day. We'll be back tomorrow to finish the bed and start on the shelter. So stay tuned.
So one of the first things I want to do before I top off my bed with the uh, cross members is I want to put some stakes in to stabilize the whole thing. Now, it uh, got down pretty cold last night, but I think the ground is still soft enough to be able to pound some stakes in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two and try to put two in every corner or until I feel it's, uh, it's steady and stable. Trim off the ends to match. much as I'd like to select all the right material that I need for this project, the fact of the matter is sometimes you gotta just take what you can get and adapt it. I had a piece here that was too big and I split it in half so I used it as an end cap to slow down anything that rolls around on the, on the rest of the bed. I took the other piece and put it at the other end. Well, now you've got your bed, depending on the time of the day and how much time you have and what material is available, now it's time to put a little padding on it. Now, if you were in a boreal forest and you had, you know, boughs aplenty out there, you could make a nice six inch mattress out of spruce boughs. Uh, depending on where you are in New England, you could use American hemlock boughs. I, on the other hand, am in a semi-deciduous forest with eastern white pine and there's a sparse amount of eastern uh, hemlock. Now in an emergency situation I could certainly use the hemlock and the eastern white pine. It would take quite a, quite a while probably to get a nice five or six inch bed um, but if all I had was time then you know I'd go for it. But since this is not an emergency situation and uh, the hemlock around this area are pretty distressed anyway. What I'm going to use is uh, I'm going to substitute boughs for some perennial grass uh, hay that I have around my yard. So I got to truck that in, not truck it in, but pack it in, uh, which isn't too far away. It's probably, you know, uh, a couple thousand feet away, so it's not too bad. The other thing I thought I might do is put some side rails on this uh, once I get the corners lashed down just to sort of hold in the bedding so it's not all spilling out one way or the other. I don't care so much about the ends as I do the sides of it rolling off. So I might take some smaller saplings and lash them down uh, here just to do some like side railing. All right, let's get the lash in the corners. Okay, so what I've done, I've got a couple of rails just placed on there so you can see what uh, it will look like with rails on it. I don't have the ones that I want yet. Uh, but I'll do that shortly. 
And as you can see, I've roughed out what the shelter is going to look. I have the cross pole here. I'm going to have three or more members that are going to be uh, the roof rafters with a support in the back. But this is all just roughed out. This is not how it's going to end up looking. I have things just roughly tied here and there just so that I can make the adjustments. I'm going to put the tarp on it, make sure the length is right and all of that. And then I'll finish up this stuff a little bit. But that'll be in part two. So be sure to see part two. I'll put a link above and a link in the show notes. And you can also check out the shelter uh, playlist and other videos on my channel. So thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and share with all your friends. And since it's close to New Year, Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2017. Take care now.